Hi. Okay, so let's uh, pick up where we left off last time. So the last couple of days I have been busy preparing my playground in my backyard. So uh, with the help of my kids I have uh, prepared a um, circular surface there uh, on which I can uh, conduct flight testing with uh, various vehicles and right now it's this Quaxel Levitator version. Um, I have been doing some changes on this machine. I have spaced the rotors further apart here. I was able to add like um, like 140 millimeters or so. That's like uh, five six inches, which uh, feels a little bit better. Now the propellers are not passing by each other as close as before. Uh, I should tell you that this is actually the very first time I am watch watching this clip and the uh, the next clip that's coming up. So this is my uh, spontaneous uh, reaction and also. Um, a way for me to uh, see what's actually uh, going down here when I start to uh, spin up the rotors. Uh, so you are joining me here for the first time, so it's uh, kind of exciting. Um, I am powering up the, uh, the rotors to give them uh, the first real test spin with all motors functioning. I have just been calibrating two speed controllers that didn't um, set uh, turn on the motors uh, at the same throttle position as the other motors. So now all motors should start at the same throttle set setting. I'm just flipping a lot of switches. It's like the pre-charge switch for each uh, speed controller for the capacitor bank and then there are the main switches which handles the uh, current. And I didn't have a really appropriate switch for this so I had three switches in parallel for each wing there to handle the current draw. So here comes the first spin-up test. And I think it looks good. It's quite majestic just standing on the ground. I'm also doing a control surface input there just to see that the uh, wings move in appropriate directions. Uh, I've checked this before of course, but I, I want to do a final check um, uh, when everything is assembled and under power. And now I'm getting in uh, the position to uh, make a higher power run I'm attempting to gently gently advance the throttle until the machine takes off uh, for the very first time just to see how how it uh, reacts and how it uh, behaves oh yeah <laughs> and then it just struck me uh, I might as well uh, recalibrate both flight controllers just to make sure that they are uh, okay with this uh, platform on which the machine is standing. It's, it's quite level so I will use it as a reference surface for being perpendicular. Uh, so I want the flight controllers to be in sync and they have been outdoors now and it's pretty cold and you never know what happens to the components. Now they are uh, recalibrated and I will do the first attempt to take off with this uh, coaxial levitator. You can see that the, there's quite a lot of movement from the vegetation on the ground, so we're really starting to move some air here. And the machine's weight right now is 93 kilogram. Okay, so uh, that was the very first small, small uh, little jump. It barely broke loose from the uh, from the ground, but it had the it was just on the verge to 
take off or it did take off a little bit uh, so ooh, this is so disappointing to see the amount of vibration in the structure I, I did fear vibration vibration is always a thing with rotor wing machines uh, but this was really bad and I do think there are several contributing factors to this uh, one being of course that the the blades the wings are not set at the exact same angle of attack and the rigid structure with the wing struts does not allow for the blades with the wings to flap to sort of dissipate that extra lift one or two blades might have but directly transferring it to the to the main tube there uh, jerking it around making these vibrations and also this uh, low wing loading machine i think is especially susceptible to to the disturbance the upper wing causes for the under wing so it, you get a lot of vibration from that as well i believe so now i uh, i'm just curious to see how bad it is so i'm filming it in slow motion uh, this uh, the second time so this is the second time i attempt to uh, make a little little hop uh, i think it would be just interesting to see how it appears uh, if i can get any more information but i have to tell you my heart is really uh it's really low um it looked so good and it seemed fine when I was uh, just revving it up a little bit, like when it still was on the ground and, and just uh, gently passing through the air. But when I advanced the throttle, the vibration were really, really horrible. Um, I didn't have it time to do some significant input to it. I just uh, it was just pre prepared to handle elevator and roll, but I never really needed to do that. But it did travel a little bit sideways, so when it takes off here, I'm going to try to just adjust it back a little bit. So I'm going to give it like, uh, I think it's left roll or so. But uh, th that would be going away from the camera position. So far it doesn't look too bad. You can see the grass and bushes there whirling around a little bit so it's uh, it's gaining uh, throttle there, power. So this is the very first time I am watching this. Okay now it's lifting off. up in the air I think oh yeah it is and there oh I didn't catch that oh bam I'm trying to see what happened I really had to replay this and on the big computer screen and see okay yeah so uh, you can tell it didn't go very well so unfortunately this is one of those times where you spend a lot of time to build something and in a fraction of a second you just um, know that this is not the way uh, but of course i had to just uh, keep on going so this uh, second attempt here just to take it up in a hover did not end very well and i couldn't actually see this first time i'm doing this on the phone i have to take it up on a big screen i didn't, couldn't see could you see what happened i will uh, make a cut here and uh, uh, come back in a in a while okay so uh, i have been watching this uh, video clip now many times in slow motion and um, i really can't see what happened i can hear a distinct crack uh, moments before things started going bad when it was still in the air it's a, a cracking sound and then it leans over more in the air and then it goes down in the ground but i really could not see wh where that crack sound originated from uh, but uh, i also of course could see when i was looking at the film clips uh, several times here that the main structure the uh, central tube there it's a um, 
uh, aluminum 6082T6 uh, 3 mm thickness tube. It's actually aircraft grade 6082, so it's fairly strong. The wing tubes are only 6063, so, so they're weaker. But it was obviously under dimension for the loads, so the two uh, rotor discs could wobble significantly in between each other. There were a lot of movement, so they uh, the wingtips could approach each other much more than only via the wing flex. Also, the, the tube between the two uh, discs um, bent a lot, obviously, I could see. So, so that was just a design failure. Uh, but even so, uh, the uh, excessive vibrations uh, I could detect when I was flying at the short moment was really uh, unsatisfactory and it's totally absent in the original levitator which has a single disc which only sweeps the one uh, the air once of course continuously so it's a lot less of the uh, shakiness uh, uh, going around in that structure okay so uh, um, of course it is uh, uh, you get a little bit uh, brought down when you have a big failure like this but at the same time I feel relieved because I was not satisfied with the complexity of this machine the original levitators brilliancy was its simplicity and cleanness of the build and the few parts very simple rigid structure uh, and it really did display fail-safe feature and redundancy features which this structure would be hard pressed to compare to with its uh, a lot less stiff structure and, and the many moving parts. Of course it's a good thing to have, in, or from some perspective, a good thing to ha have this variable pitch um, rotary blades, but it's also susceptible to various new failure modes and uh, uh, well, uh, better, uh, better potential for uh, good maneuvering in, in the air, but also a lot riskier and so many more things that you have to make redundant or fail safe. So it would be it would be difficult, a really big challenge. But I had to to move down this path of uh, coaxial coaxial design because it it um, it could have been a great solution to 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 harvest both the hover efficiency and and the flight dynamics um, in in one vehicle. So uh, I just had to uh, to try this out, uh, and now I'll take a take a break and uh, think a little bit about the because I really want to get back to the original levitators, uh, just overall simplicity and and fail safe structure. Uh, I really like that and the gentle flight characteristics that it's uh, it's um, so majestic and and um, uh, in harmony with its surrounding when you're flying it a calm day. So I, I really want to get back to that. Um, and see if I can do that somehow, but but I need to add something to make it more resistant to gusts and, and uh, give it a higher uh, put, uh, higher speed uh, potential, uh, so that that it can fly so I can fly it around a little bit better than uh, than the last version. Although I did uh, develop it to a decent stage of uh, of um, maneuverability. Okay, <laughs> so um, there are a lot of things that I could say. Uh, I don't have, I don't have uh, all the uh, my thoughts cleared out yet. Um, so, uh, but, but <laughs> knowing myself, uh, I know that I will. Uh, I mean, this is part of the journey, and this is exactly the process. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, more or less rewarding. And um, and this is probably just the quickest way for me to move on to the next iteration and the next step. Uh, of course, it would have been lovely if this had uh, would have turned out to be in, be a smooth flying vehicle uh, with great characteristics, but it didn't. And, and now I know, so I can just drop that thought of uh, the, uh, or at least in, in this configuration, you can you can probably make this work. But I need to get that uh, sensation of that you know it's right, and and this. Uh, structure obviously uh, didn't show that I mean except for the crash uh, if you don't even if you don't think about that um, the the short hop I did previously was not promising it, it didn't uh, behave as you would like a vehicle to behave even the first time you take off it needs to project some sort of uh, 
uh, hope for the future and this didn't do that uh, once it uh, came off the ground it uh, looked really bad actually although the structure looked nice when it was like sitting on the ground and turning slowly okay uh, let's stop this ranting and um, i will see you in the next video bye